everyone, and thank you for tuning in to History Today. As you know, we are currently doing a series over individuals who have played an important role in impacting the philosophies and ideals of early American culture. But even more so, how has that very same impact played a role in the society that we know today? Well, today we're going to be talking about Abigail Adams, also known as the first lady and wife to John Quincy Adams, the second president of the United States. Stay tuned to find out more. Abigail Adams is a woman who is held high for her political and social involvement as a woman and her contribution to the ever-evolving American ideals. Today we're going to cover about four ways that she has helped change these very same philosophies and ideals. The first being that she actually helped change the political fashion of her day. Now, she was known to have added glamour and simplicity to the civil life and did away with that cold and formal tone of the past. Martha Washington was very no well known for her very stiff and formal way of hosting parties. However, this was not the type of style for Abigail Adams. She actually imported fashionable clothing and materials from New England before she became the First Lady. Second is how Abigail Adams used newspapers. She understood the importance and significance of writing and was determined that it be done properly. In a quote from Shields' very same story, it says, as First Lady, she became an avid reader and commentator on both Republican and Federalist newspapers in Philadelphia. Some of these would include Federalist John Fenno's Gazette of the States and William Cobbett's Porcupine's Gazette and Daily Advertiser, along with Republican Benjamin Franklin Box, Aurora, as well as the hometown newspapers of Boston, pro-administration Benjamin Russell's Columbian Sentinel, and Con Thomas Adams, Tom, Thomas Adams Independent Chronicle, and when on the road between Philadelphia and Boston, the New York Commercial Advertiser. As we see, Abigail Adams was very well and made sure that the newspapers were written correctly. She understood how news in the newspapers slowly leaked across America and that it could be altered very easily. So what she would do was find the accurate newspapers and circulate them herself. She would find the ones that she liked and thought were informative, send them to her family and friends that were farther away, and ask them to republish them in the local newspapers. In turn, the ones the newspapers that she found were inaccurate and had skewed information, she would write them letters explaining how they were and ask them to correct and republish way that we know that Abigail Adams played a significant role on the early culture of America was how she was a counselor to the president. Through counseling her husband, she helped shape the Republican court with her considerable abilities, political instincts, and her writing ability. And we have proof of this because of the exchange of letters between her and her husband, the president. Letters from her husband explain his gratitude for her and her support in his decisions as president. John Quincy Adams says in this, Among all disappointments and perplexities which have fallen to my share in life, nothing has contributed so much to support my mind as the choice blessing of a wife whose capacity enabled her to comprehend and whose pure virtue obliged her to approve the views of her husband. Then the cheering consolation of my heart, most solitary, gloomy, and desolate, consolate hours. Written May 22nd, 1776. As we see here, John Quincy Adams really played a lot of attention to his wife and, and was very appreciative to how supportive she was of him. Fourth way, the Abigail Adams played a significant role in forming the philosophies of early America was how she was an advocate for women's 
rights and a feminist icon. Now, keep in mind that this was an era where Republican motherhood was very much a way of life and expected of women. This meaning for to stay home, stay out of political conversations, and simply just raise the children and take the morality of their household. However, Abigail Adams, although she does fall in this category many times, made sure that her voice was heard when a belief about something. We know that she was very vocal about women's education and believed girls should have public schooling because in her letter she writes to her husband as they are deciding the new code of laws. This is what she wrote. In the new code of laws, remember the ladies. If particular care and attention is not paid, we are determined to form it a and will not hold ourselves bound by laws in which we have no voice or representation. Written March 31st. Also, as this, as she believed, the best future for America would, ha would come from women having a proper education. She concludes, if we mean to have heroes, statesmen, and philosophers, we should have learned women. But secondly, she believed that women should have rights to own and be able to control property. For once you got married, all of your property rights were taken away and given to your husband. And this was not something that Abigail Adams believed was fair. So even though she legally had no property of her own, Abigail Adams set a portion of her husband's property and claimed it as her own. Over time, she would invest this wisely and her pocket money grew to $5,000 by 1815. This is equivalent to $100,000 today. Secretly, Abigail Adams was better with their finances than her husband, John. She took bigger risks and profited from wartime shortages. They actually decided that she would be in charge of the finances rather than him, even though he took the glory for what type, kind of money that they made. We know that she was very talented in this area because President Jefferson and Madison, when they passed away, they were both deeply indebted. However, the Adams family could pay their estate a years over. How a final act of rebellion was writing a will. Now, this was a very large and significant role because she had nothing to give technically under the law. Everything was given to her husband. But even more so, what she put in her will would be even more compelling. While she left a few her sons, a majority of their belongings were given to married women. This included daughters, nieces, female servants, and daughter-in-laws, hoping to enable them to make the same claim to property as she once had. While her will was never truly fulfilled, as she had to scratch it out during her dying days while her husband was still very much healthy, she was known to generally, generously support impoverished relatives, neighbors, and children during her life. As we can see, Abigail Adams played a very significant role to forming the early philosophies of her day. However, she is still significant to our very own society that we know. She is historically remembered, and her beliefs are relevant even now. How is she relevant? How is she important to us and historically remembered? Well, first, Abigail's letters give us a glimpse of what life was like and capture the tone and emotion of past events. We know that writing was very important to Abigail Adams and she exchanged letters to very many people, some being her sister down in different states, Thomas Jefferson, her husband, several different people she would write to. Her letters have given us a better insight to very many different things. A few of these would include how her letters have given us insight to the quarrels between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. They also help us understand the opinions of not only Abigail, but her husband, in which she displayed him as always pushing him continually.
continually studying and documenting events and impressions of others. Her letters also show what type of conditions the people of the past found themselves in, especially in New York and Philadelphia. From yellow fever and smallpox to inflation, Abigail's letters give readers a first-hand glimpse of these circumstances. So, her letters give us a lot of information on the historical influence that she had during her day. We are able to know a lot more about history and early America because of Abigail. She is also remembered as a mother to many influential people. A few of these would include her son, John Quincy Adams, who became the sixth president, Charles Francis Adams Jr., who was a congressman who helped ensure Britain's neutral stance during the Civil War, and also her great-grandson, Henry Brooks Adams, who was a historian and author. Now, Abigail Adams is remembered historically as a very wonderful woman, but her relevance today is why we were talking about her. For Abigail Adams was one of the first women to stand for women's rights, specifically married women. One might say that she was even a beginning founder of feminism, something that's very relevant to now. Now during her day, Republican motherhood was very much the way of life and expectation for women, especially in the northern areas. However, she believed that women should not be restrained to this. We're finding a balance between that. She wanted women to be able to support and raise the children, teach them, and do everything they can for their family. However, she knew that women needed to be educated in order to succeed, as well as have more say in finances and be able to attain property and independence. We face similar issues, although not exactly the same. Feminism is still very much here today. We are trying to find the balance between having a career and equal opportunity in as our male counterparts, yet still finding the balance between those careers and opportunity and being able to raise children and maintain the home as we wish. There is a lot to be done in this area, but it is the beliefs like Abigail Adams and the influence that she played that have influenced the many people of the past, specifically women, but also men, who have stood up for feminism and women's rights. So the feminists that you know today have been influenced by this very same woman and how and why they believe that women deserve equality. Concluding this session, we will say this quote coming from a new letter to Abigail Adams as well as the Court of Abigail Adams by Shields. For Abigail Adams was a broker of patronage, a conduit of information to newspapers, and a counselor for the president, as well as an intelligent, well-read woman who possessed a character and excellent interpersonal skills. She was a very smart woman who had influenced the philosophies of the past even though she technically had no voice. The fact is very much here today and speaks through the feminists of this nation now. Thank you for joining in and have a great rest of your evening.